Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our expert Q&A on React Native and building apps with React Native. We're very excited that you're all here, and uh, we'd like to like to get rolling. So um, my name is Stephen Moyes. I'm a program manager on the React Native team. Um, I'm joined by a bunch of folks on uh, on the team that we're going to introduce here in a second. Um, but uh, in, in classic Microsoft fashion, let's go ahead and get started with uh, an agenda. Um, so, uh, welcome to welcome to build uh, this year. Um, I'm going to go through what you can expect uh, during the session. We're going to go through some team introductions, uh, and then we'll go to open question and answer. We're hoping to do this in a AMA freeform fashion. So, if you have questions, please post them in chat. Let me talk about how to engage with us. So like I said, um, use the chat box to ask any questions. We've got moderators on the back end who are here to uh, publish them. If uh, you post a question, you can post anonymously or you can use your name. Um, the questions will appear in the chat for everybody once they're approved. You can upvote your favorite questions using a, a thumbs up and then the experts will answer verbally. I will be handing off to the various experts to answer your questions, um, and we'll be focusing on the most popular questions first. So uh, just so that you're aware, the session is being recorded for internal use, but please don't record this session. Um, please also don't spam the chat and uh, adhere to the Microsoft Code of Conduct. The Code of Conduct is displayed here. Um, I'm not going to read it to you, uh, but please be respectful of everybody um, in this call and please be respectful of us. And uh, we look forward to having a great Q&A. So with that, let me dive into some uh, 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 meet the experts. So like I said, um, hello everyone. My name is Stephen Moyes. Again, I'm a program manager on the React Native team. You can follow me at Moyes SA or React Native MSFT on Twitter. Um, I'm joined by a few folks like Kiki St. Ange, who's one of my peers. Hey. Uh, Harini is one of my peers as well, and she's helping to moderate. Hello. And then we also have some technical experts on the call that I would like to introduce. Um, the first of which is Alex. Hello. We also have Andrew. Hello. And Eloy. Hello and Keith Melman. Hi there. So we have a really great uh, set of folks that can answer your questions. I'm really excited to see what you ask. Um, uh, I also would like to briefly mention some of the topics that uh, you can ask us about, some of the things that you're um, maybe to, to, to inspire your questions. So the first is uh, ask us about React Native Windows and the new uh, React Native Mac OS. So that's really cool. At Build this year, we're announcing that we're adding first class support for Mac OS in addition to Windows. So you can ask us about that. Um, you can ask us about how Microsoft apps are using React Native. Uh, you can ask us about how we're engaging with Facebook. Um, you can ask us about our, our various uh, JavaScript platform, uh, JavaScript engines like Hermes, Chakra, and V8. And you can ask us about the relationship between React Native and WinUI. So there's a bunch of topics that you can ask us about. Um, to start out with, I think I'm going to uh, ask kind of a, a softball question, and this one I'm going to direct it, uh, Andrew, actually, which is, why are we supporting Mac OS? We, we understand why we're supporting Windows, but uh, Andrew, can you tell us why we're supporting Mac in addition to Windows? Uh, sure. Um, the, the main reason is that uh, we started out looking at React Native for our use internally. Uh, specifically in Office is where I work. Uh, and so obviously if we want to write cross-platform UI and take full advantage of the fact you get to write and share code, uh, we needed to support Mac OS for our usage internally. So within Office, we, we use React Native both in Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and then React on, on web as well. Awesome, very good. Um, the next question actually comes from Twitter at dstanley. Uh, or excuse me, Staley asks, are there plans to bring WinUI 3 controls to React Native in an easy to use way? I think I'm going to hand this one over to Alex. Uh, yes, actually, uh, we do have plans to uh, make use of WinUI 3. We actually have a 
prototype of our uh, test app that is using WinUI 3. Um, so yes, great question. Awesome. And on that note, Dylan asks, are there plans to create a JavaScript projection of the Windows Runtime API so that React Native apps can call native APIs without having to create native modules? Alex, do you want to take this one too? Um, yes, sure. Um, yes, we can. We when you write a React Native uh, app, um, you you are running a uh, UWP app in the case of Windows, and you're using uh, WinRT APIs. You can mix and match, um, you know, using uh, React Native for your UI or plain XAML or WinUI three. You will be able to do that. Um, so yes, very All cool. That's cool. Awesome. Um, I've got a question for Kiki now, I think. Um, Jake asks, how often do you have to touch native code to be able to find solutions that you want? In other words, how complete of a solution is React Native with the products that you develop? I think uh, in, it kind of depends on the kind of app that you're creating. Some that are super deep or really integrated with your system, you have to touch some native code to bubble up stuff that we haven't exposed ourselves or written modules for. Uh, but since we're still relatively new, we have actually gone through and, and, and built a lot of modules and are starting to support more things. So we're hoping very little unless it's like super specific to the platform you're developing on. Uh, I actually have built an app in React Native and I've shipped it both on iOS and I've built some internal stuffs for, for Windows and I haven't had to touch anything yet, uh, especially since we got the async storage module out. So it, it's been pretty JavaScript only for me so far, but I haven't written anything like super intense like what Office is writing yet. Uh, so I imagine they're touching some native code specific to Mac OS and, and Windows when they do it, but it depends. Awesome. Um, I think I'm going to give Alloy this next question, which is, what's the best way to learn React Native if you are experienced with regular React for web? And what is the best way to learn React Native? What resources are available besides documentation? Hey, um, that's a great question. I think right now I would start with one of the um, existing implementations first uh, because they have full support and all the documentation that is out there um, covers the existing uh, APIs uh, before moving to perhaps Windows first and Mac OS uh, next uh, because that's so, so much in flux. As for tutorials, um, that is actually a great question. I do not know firsthand of great um, resources. Is there somebody else that knows one of those. So one thing that might bear mentioning is that uh, we'll share some resources about how you can get started with React uh, Native Windows and React Native Mac OS here at the end of the presentation. Um, if you want the spoiler alert, you can go to aka.ms slash React Native to get started. No hyphens, I'll show you the link here in a minute, but that's a really great resource for getting started with React uh, Native Windows and React Native Mac OS. Um, so uh let's see the next question i think i'm going to hand off to keith which is what is the most common backend stack for your react native apps do you use dotnet core um so the the um the underlying platform is built on top of native code native c plus plus code so um the most typical scenario would be you just write your app using react native components which are all javascript components and they project into the native platform and underneath the, the native C++ stack will be running. Um, however, you can also write your own modules. Um, and if you do write your own modules, you have a choice of what language you want to author them in. And you can choose to author your modules in C Sharp um, or in C++. So um, this would be the case where you would you would see um, C Sharp code running most, most often. Um, it's also possible using our CLI to create an app um, where the app code is written in C Sharp. And this might allow you to write some code around the React Native part of your app that's also in C Sharp. This would be a more uncommon scenario, but we support that as well. Hope that answers your question. That's great. Um, next, I'm, I think I'm going to pass it back to uh, Alex to answer part one and then Andrew to answer part two, which is uh, Marcel asks, how exactly does React Native take usage of WinUI? Is there a similar approach being used for macOS? Uh, Mac OS? 
Do you want to take the WinUI port part of that, Alex? Sure, yes. Um, yes, so uh, React Native for Windows is basically, um, it has an engine that uh, deals with the um, React part of things, and then it outputs uh, at runtime uh, XAML um, components, XAML elements. And so um, basically what we're doing with the prototype that we're working on is uh, moving this output from being on uh, system XAML to being on WinUI 3. Awesome. Andrew, do you want to take the part about Mac OS? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, just like sort of uh, React Native on, on the other platforms, we, we use the, the native Mac OS UI framework. I think sort of to tie into to Jamie's question about uh, plans for Catalyst, which is not quite native on Mac OS, um, is that at least internally, a lot of our usage of React Native is within existing apps that are, that are not using Catalyst. And so right now we're, we're, we're just using the, uh, the, the fully native platform rather than Catalyst. Uh, so right now there are not plans to do that. Um, although someone could certainly submit a pull request. Um, yeah, that, that's awesome. One thing that definitely bears mentioning is that we're doing all of this development in the open. We're all we're, we're open source on GitHub. We definitely recommend that if you have uh, uh, bug fixes that you want to implement or feature requests or uh, any way that you want to engage with us, we're definitely uh, happy to engage and, and work with you um, as we make React Native better for all developers. So that, that's really uh, that's really awesome. I actually want to take a quick question, which is uh, Andre asks, what is better for UWP, React Native or XAML? And what I want to mention here is that uh, it's really about where you're coming from as a developer. So if you have a lot of experience using uh, XAML and C Sharp and you know, you're know you a really strong desktop first developer, then using XAML in your UWP app is is, is really great. That, that, that's awesome. Um, if you're coming from a JavaScript or TypeScript background, if you are familiar with React Native already, um, then React Native for Windows and React Native for Mac OS is, is a really great option for you to deploy to those endpoints as well. Um, so uh, it, it, we really want to meet you where you're at, and um, ultimately, under the covers, React Native for Windows builds a UWP. So uh, you're you're all kind of part of the part of the family anyway if you're using uh, React Native Windows. So um, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, anonymous asks, uh, and I think I might hand this one back to uh, Andrew. I think uh, is React Native Mac OS ready for production? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, within Office, we are we are shipping several features today uh, using React Native Mac OS. So, you know, if Office is using it, uh, it's certainly uh, ready for production. Awesome. Yes, and I do want to highlight that that Office is is using React Native Mac OS. Like it's it's a uh, it's 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 really being used. <laughs> um, this next question, I think I'm going to hand off to Kiki. Can you describe the relationship between Fluent UI for React, the web app version, versus React Native, and maybe also how Fluent UI React Native fits into that whole um, into that whole story? So Fluent UI is uh, like material design for Google, uh, or like the flat design that uh, iOS has. It's just a design model that we perpetuate across all of our apps, and so it, since you're using a WinUI app in the end, you actually get it by default. So you don't have to worry about trying to integrate WinUI into your React Native app if you're if you're using general uh, components that are using the native components underneath. You're going to get that 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 experience for free. Awesome. Um, I think I'm going to hand this one to Alloy, which is could you describe the process to create a desktop app Mac and Windows from an existing mobile app in React Native? Yeah, so currently the Windows and Mac OS React Native implementations augment a, um, an existing uh, application st structure. So uh, what you do is uh, you go into your application uh, directory and you run uh, React Native uh, Windows in it or React Native Mac OS Win it, in it, and that will set you up with the, the best matching uh, Windows or Mac OS version for your application. 
Um, and from there on out, it creates a similar scaffold as you're used to with iOS and Android. Um, and you can start building out your application and sharing code. And similarly, you can use extensions like uh, Windows. Unsure what the Windows extension is. I assume it's Windows. Somebody can correct me. And then there's macOS.js um, or TS, of course, in our case. Um, yeah, so that should generally be it. And uh, then you run, um, you can run the application from the command line like you're used to, uh, except then uh, run macOS or run Windows or from uh, Visual Studio or uh, Xcode, if that is if that picture fancy. Awesome. Um, I think I'm going to hand this one back to Kiki again. Um, is there any plan with Facebook to integrate the Windows implementation in the official React Native website? Because some developers think that React Native is iOS and Android only. Yes, uh, I'm actually currently working with the documentation people. I'm trying to garner their trust. Uh, I'm contributing to their docs. I'm helping them out a little bit with that. And they've actually created sections on their main site where they, under the docs, they have guides iOS and guides Android, and they're actually waiting for <laughs> me to go in once I figure out the process a little bit better uh, and put in guides Mac OS and guides Windows and then link out to our site so we can have some cross-contamination there and, and make people aware that it is available on those platforms as well. So yes, absolutely, there are plans. Uh, and we understand that there's a little bit of unknown there because though it's not on the official site, but yeah, we're planning on doing that. Awesome. I think I'm going to hand this one to Keith, which is React Native is intended for mobile, uh, so it doesn't handle click, but rather on press handlers. How do you get hover effect to work in uh, React Native for Windows? Um, well, so. Yes, you're, you're right in pointing out that um, the React Native uh, APIs were designed for mobile, um, and as such, they didn't include uh, provisions for things like a mouse or a keyboard and other things that you'd see on desktop. Um, so we are in the process of adding support for those things as first class citizens in the API. So um, we have support that we're adding for mouse um, as well as keyboard. And um, we're working through the details of how that would affect the general purpose controls, like um, like a touchable, for example. And um, most of this stuff is already working in React Native Windows. Um, there are some more things that we're not done yet, but we are designing them right now. And so expect those problems to get solved as we uh, make the, the platform more mature. Awesome. Um, yeah, and one thing that Bear's mentioning is that uh, like React Native for Windows uh, was built from the ground up to support those desktop experiences that you expect. And so there's support within the platform. Um, so you don't have to worry about making sure that your, your click handlers work exactly right because there's already support in the platform. Um, next, I think I'm going to hand this one to uh, Andrew. Um, are there any applications already available that are using React Native for Windows? Uh, I'm trying to think exactly where, where things are in the sort of release cycle. I believe that the, the Windows Calendar app, uh, it, the new preview mode, is is uh, available to at least Windows insiders. Uh, so if you run running the, the calendar, Windows Calendar app, the, if you hit the, the preview app, the, the entire app is, uh, the new one is written in React Native. So that's probably one of the biggest ones. Uh, and then uh, a couple of the Xbox apps, uh, and someone else will have to fill in which ones those are. Yeah, um, I can talk to that a little bit. So uh, the uh, Xbox, like the Game Pass app on PC is written using React Native. And actually it's it's kind of an exciting story where the React, uh, excuse me, the Xbox app uh, for PC was originally an Electron app and they converted to React Native for Windows to get a whole bunch of great performance um, and the best user experience. So you can download that from the store today. Uh, and so we'll talk a little bit more about that in our um, skilling session. I've got a link for that here in a minute. Um, it's a pre-recorded session that we deep dive into some of the su success stories around React Native for Windows. Um, but yes, like real apps within Microsoft are using uh, React Native for Windows. And I do also want to highlight that it's not just within uh, Microsoft. We're working with industry partners like uh, Axie and Plex to build experiences using React Native for Windows that are uh, super awesome. And so um, we've we've talked about those in previous uh, conferences like at Ignite last year, and we'll talk about them more in our skilling session this year. Um, but yeah, lots of uh, companies both within uh, 
Microsoft and outside of Microsoft are, are really using React Native Windows, so that's that's awesome. Let me look through these questions again. Uh, let's see. Duh, uh, I think I might hand this one back to Android or uh, Alloy, which is, does React Native on macOS use the native Cocoa frameworks or does it rely on Xamarin? I think I'll give this one to Alloy. Yeah, so uh, as Andrew was saying earlier, um, it uses the the native UI framework, so that is AppKit, like Coco, as you know it. So that is NSVU based, um, and it's otherwise entirely similar to iOS, which uh, the iOS version, which is UI view based. So not Xamarin. Awesome. Um, there was a question in here. Uh, I'm not sure who I'm going to hand this one off to, uh, which is, is React XP something that Microsoft is using? Uh, I'm going to hand this one to Harini, actually. Oh, but she's muted. <laughs> I was trying to moderate, too many things. Um, <laughs> yeah, so React XP, uh, um, uh, I, some of you may know, was a uh, kind of a meta framework that was created by the Skype team, and it was uh, uh, it was a uh, it was an abstraction library that was built on top of React Native. Um, uh, right now, there's not much usage of React Native, uh, React XP, um, uh, but there's far more usage of core React Native itself, which is what it was building on anyway. So uh, um, the official uh, Microsoft's uh, adoption of React Native for Windows as well as for uh, Mac OS is happening at the React Native layer, and uh, we are wanting to support more at the core layer than at the abstraction layers at this point. So that's kind of the state of things. Awesome. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to take the next question, which is, are there any good portals where one can reach out for help about UWP development? Um, in, in this context, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer the question uh, about the React Native uh, UWP, so that 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 that's React Native for Windows, and you can go to aka.ms/slash React Native to get started with React Native for Windows. If your question is more about UWP development all up, um, that's that's a little bit outside our wheelhouse. Um, but you can always go to uh, uh, docs.microsoft.com to get, to get started with UWP development all up, and we also have uh, talks about WinUI. And, um, uh, and and developing native apps coming up at, at build. So you can add those to your session builder if you just look for WinUI. Um, awesome. So let me see. Do, 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 do. We've got so many questions. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to hand this one to Kiki, which is to what extent is Microsoft collaborating with Facebook on Windows and Mac support? Hi, Ellie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice question. Uh, very much so. We were doing uh, weekly syncs uh, with a lot of the Facebook team, and they would sort of alternate people uh, depending on what we were working on. I think now we're doing bi weekly syncs now with them since uh, the current circumstances have been working out better that way. Uh, but we work out with them very closely, both on the documentation side as well as uh, the repo side. And even if there's uh, any expertise that either of the teams have, like we're more .NET C++ people, so we're like, hey, if you need any help in that regard, uh, we can lend those devs to you, and, and we've done that, and they've helped us a lot sort of understand things, and uh, Ellie in particular has been great for me because I'm not a JavaScript expert, so I've been sort of uh, learning through him and through Andrew as well, so I'd say it's pretty close. Uh, like, I, there's always room for improvement, but we're working on it. Awesome. Yes. Hi, hi friends from Facebook. <laughs> um, uh, I'll wave. Hello. <laughs> um, so we've got a question from Anonymous that's it's it's a little bit long, and I think I'm going to hand this one to Alex unless somebody else would prefer it, which is um, up, uh, about upgrading. So upgrading from version 60 is tough. Uh, there seem to be a lot of breaking changes that have not been that have not found resources on when trying to upgrade to version 62. They're on version 59. Can you provide any resources on how to address breaking changes that have occurred? during the upgrade process. Um, this is in regards to native UI components and native modules. Uh, an example for a native UI component I ran into um, was it ac accessing a shadow node. It seemed like uh, how you access it changes, but um, in general, can somebody talk to the uh, upgrade process and um, some of the pains that, that come with that? 
I'm going to give it to, to Alex. <laughs> oh, but he's muted. Oh, not muted. OK. Oh, am I muted now? OK. No, you're good. <laughs> um, yeah, I think maybe and is Andrew so Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can answer this. Um, I think um, uh, it's, as, as we've been getting started, the, the breaking changes have been more frequent as we're sort of standing the platform up than, than we would like. And we're hoping in the future there are fewer breaking changes like this. Uh, and uh, so sort of tooling for handling this, I would say, is more similar to what sort of React Native's tooling was maybe a year ago. And we're sort of playing catch up and, and trying to uh, get our tooling for, for helping people upgrade to, to be better. And we expect to do that in the future. Um, in terms of, of uh, the documentation for this specific upgrade, uh, we're going to be publishing uh, some more documentation on the 6.2 release soon. Uh, and hopefully that that'll help uh, with with some of the issues you're hitting, uh, and then the specifics. I, I guess you can just contact us on on our, on our website. And I'd also like to uh, get Al Alloy's two cents here too as well. Yeah. So I think aside from our specific implementations, the the upgrades. 0.61, I believe, as well. Definitely 0.62 um, have been a little rough on everybody because they have just been very large. It had been a while since uh, the previous release had been put out. And so there's just a, I mean, it, we're still prior to version one, which is specifically because it is a moving target. Um, and so with a large gap, that means that there's a lot of things for people to fix. However, one of the things that, that we have definitely started putting time into is being more involved in the release process to ensure that there's more healthy, a frequent release uh, cycle. And now that we are catching up to those point releases, uh, we should probably be following closely to that, which would make keeping up to date easier. Awesome, thank you. Um, there are a few questions in chat about the pros and cons of React Native uh, for Windows and Mac versus Electron. How does Electron compare to React Native? Um, and I think, uh, unless somebody else wants to take a stab at this, I, I think uh, I'll, I'll quickly mention that um, React Native fundamentally builds a native app for you under the covers. So if you build a React Native for Windows app uh, and you look through your folders, you'll see you actually have a Visual Studio solution. You've got a native app there. It's the same on every platform. It's a little bit different of a programming model than Electron, where you you you're 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 like a, a web app, for example. Um, we've done performance testing comparing uh, React Native versus Electron, and have found that uh, that the React Native apps perform almost the same as they have very similar performance characteristics as a native app because they are a native app. I mean, there's some overhead compared to a, a pure C++ application. There is a JavaScript diffing engine. There's, um, you know, there there is some overhead that comes with the framework. But fundamentally, there, there, it, it from a performance point of view, uh, it's 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 really difficult to compare React Native and Electron because they're just two totally different app types. Um, so uh, we also know that in general, uh, native apps have better accessibility and user experience sort of built in um, by, by, by default because they, they feel really great on the native platform. Um, that's a little different than a, an Electron app, which is, which is kind of hosted in, in a browser effectively. It's hard to get that sort of native experience. Electron apps sort of feel uh, a little bit different. And so there, there, there's, um, there's benefits to both, to be clear, there's benefits to both, but uh, we, we on the React Native team really do believe in uh, the performance and user experience gains that you get from using React Native. So we're almost at time. Um, I, I want to share uh, some, some closing resources. Uh, the chat will remain open for a little bit uh, after the call, but since we're almost at time, I'm going to go to the thank you slide. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. This was super exciting uh, to, to communicate with you all at, at Build Virtual Build 2020. Um, you can keep the conversation going by following us at React Native MSFT on Twitter. Uh, our skilling session, Kiki and I are doing a skilling session where we're going to talk about some of the success stories and talk about uh, building applications. Uh, the skilling session isn't quite posted yet, but the link is on the screen, aka.ms slash m365sk119. And if you want to get started with React Native for Windows and React Native for Mac, visit us at aka.ms slash React Native. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a great build. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.